oyster reefs hold fish they hold any kind of fish that we want to catch out there in the bay redfish black drum flounder trout <laughs> So we'll talk about how to find oyster reefs and how to fish them uh, to be productive out there. So pretty much all your muddy bays are going to have oyster reefs. Um, the areas I fish, that'll be Nueces Bay, Copano Bay, uh, St. Charles Bay, Mission Bay. A little bit of Aransas Pass does have some oyster reefs in it. Um, they're just smaller patches over in, in Aransas, mo most of it. So if you don't have Google Earth, man, I didn't really start learning about structure and stuff until I started looking at Google Earth, uh, you know, four or five years ago when I moved to Saltwater. And I didn't really know, you know, like a lot of people, what to look for. I just I just started studying it and looking and see you know what's out there and what what can I go fish and then I'd go fish it and start to learn what these color changes are on Google Earth and then you know just go out there and try it so I'll give you some examples of uh, oyster reefs here's some deeper ones right here all of these dark patches going on these are all oysters all of this and this and that and all of these these are all oysters in here so that's one example of some oyster reefs here's some examples in a little bit cleaner water these are all oysters right in here a lot of times they have that dark edge you see the dark edge going on right there and right here too this dark edge that usually is oysters and not grass when they have a dark edge so color changes pay attention to those on google earth and especially pay attention to these uh, circular looking ones. These are just small little oysters, small little patches of oysters right there and right there. And even all this is all scattered oysters in here. All of this is oysters. So depending on where, which bay you're looking at, you know, sometimes the image will look different. But, <clears throat> you know, you're looking for that darker uh, color change. So... And then, of course, you have the scattered oysters, all these little specks, these little black specks. These are all scattered oysters, and they hold fish, too. We'll get into how to, how to fish these here in a minute. Small little patches of oysters right here. Even the little ones. The, uh, these small ones, they look real small on Google Earth, but they're actually a decent, pretty decent size. You can actually measure, if you were curious to know, you know how big is this oyster reef and you can measure it you can get an idea of how big they are so this one's about 20 feet wide and uh you know it's not very big but i catch fish on these small reefs too so here's an example of some as well and a lot of these uh are exposed when google earth took their image the way you know it's exposed is this white this white color right in here right on the the center of it it's where it's most shallow so this is an oyster reef in here and then here's one over here so little patches uh, of oysters here's another small patch of oysters right in here these this black color right in there so they're going to be the darker colors see if i can find a patch of grass that way <clears throat> you won't confuse grass with oysters so all of this color out in here is your submerged grass and then you have some oysters right over here so this dark edge they they usually have a dark line right on the edge of the oysters that's how you usually can tell so like i said this is a this is cl a clear water bay and it's a little bit harder to tell but these these are oysters in here too so so those were pretty small patches of oysters uh your longer and bigger and deeper oyster reefs are gonna be sometimes hard to see 
so here's one right here and all you can tell and see is just a, a tan color right in there and it goes all the way down like that so so some of the reefs are a lot longer and, and i like to work these big long reefs i keep my kayak or if you're in a boat i keep it right along the edge and i cast parallel with that oyster reef so what that looks like if we zoom in a little bit you want to get as close as you can with your kayak or your boat and you want to make your cast parallel and you can cast away from the structure a little bit but when they're holding on structure they're going to be up tight to it so keep your your vessel tight to it and cast parallel and that's basically how i work oyster reefs i'll keep moving up and i'll cast just a few times you know and then i'll move up and cast a few times so whenever the fish are really holding on structure they're gonna hold on that structure even if you spook them off of it so if you spook some fish off of the reef they're gonna go right back to it so if you circle back around and start casting believe it or not those spooked fish will will hit you know so that's how i caught those drum the other day they were going right back to the same spot that i initially spooked them in so don't don't worry about spooking fish it it sometimes lets me know where they're at and then i have an advantage you know so uh i used to not think like that and i used to not you know i thought spooking fish was the end of the day but i don't think like that anymore it, it helps you to know so you're going to look for mud stirs and then you're going to look for the wakes when they push off of that reef um you know if it's if it's pretty shallow where that fish is sitting then you'll see his his movements the water movements and then of course if the sun's out you can see that fish actually down in the water um so don't worry about spooking them you know if you for me when i start spooking fish that's when i start fishing on a low activity day of course i'm looking before i'm looking to spook them intentionally i'm looking to uh to cast to activity and bait fish activity and any bait and finger mullet that's flickering around erratic you know i'm looking for things like that of course big swirls that's happening and then that that bait fish moved you know so that's a fish chasing those bait fish so the one problem a, a lot of people have with fishing structure and i and i have it sometimes too is getting hung up on the structure well it, it's definitely going to happen there's some ways to help prevent it if you're using soft plastics use a lighter jig head or a lighter swim bait hook such as a 1 16th ounce they won't sink as fast as soon as it hits the water i start working the lure and i'm reeling it and i'm popping it reeling it and popping it and i'm keeping that lure above all those oysters because a lot of the oysters and, and a lot of times the fish are right up tight to the shallow areas you only have like six inches of water and if you let that lure sink too long you're going to definitely get hung up so if you if you don't get if you don't ever get hung up in your fishing structure you're probably not fishing tight enough to the structure because it it happens it's going to happen you're going to get hung up um <clears throat> you know these when i fish structure i don't use the more expensive soft plastics like the voodoo shrimp and stuff because i don't want to freaking waste 20 dollars worth of <laughs> voodoo shrimp so i use the other soft plastics with a cheap jig head and if i end up losing it you know it's no big deal if you do get hung up you can take your kayak or your boat and go past where your lure is and it'll usually pop off if you go past it so so if you get hung up on the oysters right in there and your kayak or your boat's right there so your line is out like that you need to take your kayak or your boat and go past where you got hung up at and then start popping it off and it'll it'll get unhung like 99 percent of the time if you do that but you have to get past where you uh where you got hung up at so another way to fish oysters is with a popping cork a short leader maybe 12 inches a uh, pretty short leader and then just a hook and then shrimp you know it can be live shrimp it can be frozen shrimp if you're getting the frozen shrimp it needs to be uh either texas raised or gulf raised or if you're in another state it needs to be shrimp that's from your area so uh the imported shrimp they got they got different viruses and things like that 
that can spread to our water. So I don't use any of the imported shrimp that came, you know, overseas. But a uh, popping cork and shrimp will definitely catch them in these scenarios too. And it can help you to, to not get hung up, you know, as much as fishing on the bottom. So if you're going to use shrimp on the bottom, uh, still use a light jig head, but you're, you're probably going to get hung up a lot like that. So if you're casting right next to the oysters where the fish are. So get on Google Earth and try to find these oyster patches, oyster reefs, scattered oysters, and just go fish them, man. That's how I found all my fishing spots is just by searching and hunting and looking and you know when they're holding on the structure there'll, there'll be quite a few in there so i hope the tips were helpful thanks for watching and tight lines y'all